Hello, my name is Kiran Kumar. I am a physics lecturer. Today topic refraction through a rectangular glass lab and also lateral displacement. Welcome to my channel Nature of Physics and Art. Considering a rectangular glass lab P, Q, R, S and T is the thickness of the rectangular glass lab and this is the incident ray which is incident at a point A and this is normal and incident ray making an angle I1. When light traveling from the rarer medium to denser medium, this is air, air is the rarer medium, refractive index is mu A. When light traveling from rarer medium to denser medium, it bend towards the normal in the denser medium. This is the actual path and light get bend towards the normal. Now this is the denser medium. Denser medium is glass. Refractive index is uh, mu g. Okay. Now light is traveling from glass to air. This is air and refractive index is mu a. First a to glass and second glass to air. Now the light is in the glass is taken as refracted ray that is a b is the refracted ray and r1 is the angle of refraction but a light get deviated from the original direction here del is taken as angle of deviation and here light traveling from the glass to air that's why when light traveling from the denser medium to rarer medium it bend away from the normal it bent away from the normal okay so it is bent away from the normal so we can understand that incident ray is dotted line is taken and that is parallel with the emergent ray here i2 is the angle of incident and r2 is the angle of refraction in the a okay now we are considering snell's law from the a to glass and second time also applying the snell's law from the glass to a see now considering snell's law this is snell's law that is snell's law formula the product of a refractive index and sign angle is remains constant now mu a sin i1 which is equal to mu g sin r1 see this is angle of incident angle of refraction mu a and mu g mu a sin i which is equal to mu g sin r See now sin i1 divided by sin r1 which is equal to mu g by mu a is equation 1. Okay. Now this is the Snell's law from the A to glass. Now we are applying the Snell's law from the glass to air. This is from the glass to to air okay again Snell's law that is mu g sin i2 mu g sin i2 which is equal to mu a sin r2 so rearranging the equation sin i2 divided by sin r2 which is equal to mu a by mu g is equation number now we are doing equation 1 into equation 2 that is equation 1 into equation 2 and also here opposite angles are equal that is angle R1 which is equal to angle I2 these are the opposite angles opposite angles are same opposite angles are equal opposite angles are equal so the condition is r1 which is equal to i2 now lhs side values 
sin i1 which is uh, which is divided by sin r1 r1 is equal to i2 sin i2 into sin i2 divided by sin r2 which is rhs at values mu g by mu a into mu a upon mu g see this mu g value this mu g value get cancel and this mu a value this mu a value get cancel and rhs at value is 1 okay and lhs side also sin i2 value here sin i2 value is get cancel now sin i1 upon sin r2 which is equal to 1 so we can write sin i1 which is equal to sin r2 here sin values are get cancel for small angles we can consider here that is i1 which is equal to r2 one thing we have to understand here angle of incident which is equal to angle of emergent so here i1 is the angle of image sorry angle of incident and r2 is the angle of emergent so finally we got here opposite angles are equal angle of incident which is equal to angle of emergent and continuation derivation for the lateral displacement now lateral displacement when light traveling from the air to glass the lateral displacement indicate a letter d and del is the angle of deviation now considering a triangle the triangle is a b c from this sin del which is equal to opposite bc divided by hypotenuse a b now bc which is equal to a b sin del one thing remember here bc what is bc here bc is the lateral displacement bc which is taken as d is the lateral displacement displacement okay and now the value is replacing in the above equation then bc is i am writing d which is equal to ab sin del and from the incident ray angle of incident i1 which is equal to the r1 and del because of opposite angles are same so now here i1 which is equal to r1 plus del from this equation del which is equal to i1 minus r1 so here d which is equal to a b sin del replacing with i1 minus r1 so the value a b we have to find from the given triangle a triangle a b e from this e angle 90 degrees that is right angle triangle so we can apply the cos r1 which is equal to adjacent side a e divided by hypotenuse a b from this equation a b which is equal to a e divided by cos r1 so here a e value which is equal to t that is thickness of the glass slab okay so now a b which is equal to t divided by cos r1 is replacing in the above 
equation so now that uh, d which is equal to a b is t divided by cos r1 into sin i1 minus r1 this is the formula for the lateral displacement now the light is traveling from the rarer medium to denser medium that bend towards the normal that ray is a refracted ray now this refracted ray also moving from the denser medium to rarer medium this bend away from the normal this ray is taken as emergent ray emergent ray must be parallel to the incident ray direction d is the lateral displacement the proof of the lateral displacement is completed now considering here lateral displacement value increases with increasing the angle of incident and this lateral displacement value increases with increasing the uh, refractive index of the glass this is the angle of incident and this lateral displacement value increases with increasing the thickness of the glass and last point here the lateral displacement value increases with decreasing the wavelength so here the lambda minimum wavelength which is equal to wavelength of the violet so violet color minimum wavelength that's why then that uh, color get maximum lateral displacement thank you very much